Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's your boy, Gerja, and... And Paul, what's up? Back with another episode of Talks with Paul. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we're going to go over how to make a trading plan and the importance of keeping it yeah. super simple. Yeah. So, where should so we what's start? Some of the, uh, why do we go through... What is a trading plan? And go through what is the trading plan exactly? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess so, we can uh, we can go. Is, okay, go ahead. I was gonna say the uh, trading plan is just uh, some sort of uh, uh, not a plan in the in the aspect of a number of things that you keep in mind when you are trading. It can be written down. It can be typed up. It can be how how whatever form uh, way you wanna save the trading plan. Uh, that you can and it's just a number of things that you keep in mind when you're trading that's like the simple explanation of a trading plan wouldn't you say yeah i'd say that there's like two ways you can do that and then there's the there's like the overall rules you follow like your pair your time your risk and then there's the like entry confirmation type of rules which would be a whole different thing but yes, yes. So I guess we can start off with like your time of, I mean, for me and what we talked about, the first most important thing to decide when you're trading is your the time you're trading, the session, and then the pair. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so talking about uh, the time you're trading, uh, I would, uh, it's more in relation to the session you're trading in the aspect. And uh, one thing that I would say, uh, when you are choosing this, choose a session that will works best around your schedule because it, it it would make trading the easiest easiest right when you agree like you're not forcing yourself to get up to trade a certain session which can in the long run kind of mess you up yeah i agree i think that's right your, your the time you're trading needs to fit your your lifestyle kind of like we talked about in the other the other videos with like if you work a full or part-time job or if you don't work you, if you like getting up early or not, like you got to pick the session that fits all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because uh, I know I was trading in New York session for a certain amount of time, and I was forcing myself to get up early. And then you can only do that for so much, so long, right? And and then it becomes a point where it's like it's exhausting, and then you stop getting up for a trading session, and then you miss them, and then after that, that messes you up further because you're like. Crap! I miss I miss getting my from trading session. I miss my trade, so I'm gonna trade a different session, and then it kind of messes you up fully. Yeah, and then you do just end up making bad decision after bad decision because you're because you missed when you were supposed to be there. Yeah. So you trade you so and, you're trading uh, Asian now. Because yeah, that fits your schedule I, better. Yeah, I mainly trade Asian because where I am from in Canada, Asian session opens up around 8 p.m. EST, mm -hmm. and. I'm always up around the time. Either I'm gonna be at work or I'm gonna be at home. So I'm always up around the time. So it works the best because then I start looking the chart around eight and I'll look on it, look look at it for like thirty minutes, uh thirty minutes to forty five minutes and then I'll close my uh, chart again and then uh, look at it again in uh, one or two hours. Mm -hmm. Uh uh because i look at it around i've noticed in the session i look at it around at the open and then i look at it around uh 11 p 11 30 p.m going into pre-london a bit mm -hmm. and then i fully close my chart around like 2 a.m eastern standard time for me so i don't do trade i don't trade uh london session trade pre-london and eastern session gotcha yeah because i remember when, when you... i was when i was doing london that was just mentally exhausted i mean i did it for like five or six months but after that i was so worn out that i had to just stop trading for like a month it was just yeah, it was a... way too early yeah because for you it was in the middle of the night right yeah so i'd have to get up at uh 1 30 1 like 1 a.m and then i'd be up all day till like eight or nine at night so it was it was some long days but the the reason was because i only had about two and a half hours to trade new york and i didn't think that was enough and now i trade new york in like an hour or two and it's it's perfect actually because if there's no trades in the first two hours when i'm there 
then the I've noticed the like probability of a good trade setting up an hour or two later after that is pretty low. Sometimes if it's like a strong range and it waits for a breakout at like NYC or something, but even that, like, I don't trade breakouts, so that doesn't do me any good. So the two yeah. hours is usually pretty solid. Yeah, so that's uh, <clears throat> one thing that you got to keep in mind in your trading plan, figure out a session that you want to trade and the time in the session because the session can be like six hours long but no one's really trading for four, six hours. No. So, uh, yeah, so figure out the time you're going to trade and the session you're trading and then uh, try different things. Maybe one week you try New York session because you think it fits your schedule and if it doesn't, you can always go down to Asia and London. There's three different sessions, right? major sessions yep. that you can trade and just pick up, uh, one of the three that best fits. Yeah, London and New York being the better ones, um, but it depends on your yeah, trading yeah, style too. Yeah, and yeah. then would you? And then I guess number one as well. We could also say not only the time, but your your pair that you're trading is yeah. you're better off picking a pair that kind of coincides with that session. Like you wouldn't trade. Um, what would even be a what would even be a pair USD for Asian CAD. session? Yeah, like you wouldn't trade USD CAD in Asian session or Asian. EUR yeah. USD in Asian session. I mean, you could, and there's probably some yeah. volume some days, but it's not consistent enough to to be reliable, in my opinion. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, good thing you mentioned that, because that's another reason why I did choose Asian session, because uh, I mainly trade GBP, JPY. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the main, that's the only pair I trade now. And then JPY uh, is a part of the Asian session, so that's why a big reason why I chose Asian. Yeah, and you gotta yeah exactly. Because I trade GJ. What, what pairs do you trade? GJ and EA as my secondary pair in pre New York. Yeah. I don't really do much New York. It's usually just pre New York for me. Um, sometimes I'll catch something on the hourly the or the four hour, but yeah. yeah. I do the London overlap. Yep. Yeah, so it's London pre NY. Sometimes the little bit of NY, but uh okay, so number one's pretty much yeah. taken care of. Number two, um we kind of decided the number of trades and your risk per trade is kinda number two together. So why yeah. why would we say number of trades do you think for number two? The the reason, the reason why I think uh, this is, should be your second uh, most preliminary trade plan is because most people struggle with over trading and over risking. So if you have a trading plan and you go into your trading session with a set amount of trades and set amount of risk you're, you're going to take, uh, you'll know when to stop to trade. You'll know when you have to close your computer, laptop, phone, whatever you're trading on. You'll know when to stop and to step away. So that's why uh, I believe this is a very important rule and should be at the top, and you should know exactly. Uh, how much it could be a risk per trade, it could be total risk for the day, and how many trades you should be taking uh, per day or per session before you even start trading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even one day would work, one or two. Um, yeah, depends on your your strategy, I guess. Yeah, it, that that's the big thing. Also, depends on how you trade. So it's like mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't have to be following another person's plans. Whatever works for your strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you say? Uh, what? No, you're good. You're good. Good. I was gonna say, what would you say? Uh, like, is your number of trades per day and uh, the risk either per trade or per day total? So on my account now, since I'm not with any firms anymore, it's my personal account. I do. Uh, the past six weeks, I allow myself to. But for the most part, I'm only getting one, if any, and I do a 3% risk per trade because I'm only doing one. Um, and I'm only yeah. trading if it's trending, like obviously trending in a very clear direction. So I'm doing less trades, but due to that, I'm doing a little bit higher risk. I think anything over 3% is, I think 3% is the cap for how high you should be on your trade. And if you're that high, it should be kind of like what I just said. You, I'm taking three or four trades a week, maybe. Last week I took two. Um, so I think if you're going to do higher risk, even if you went up to like four or five, I think personally that's too high for me mentally, and that just seems too high. 
um, it should just be less trades. And if you're going to do lower risk, then you uh, can have a little bit more trades is how I would personally balance that out. But one to two a day, 3% risk per trade. Um, but like I said, the past six weeks I've taken one a day. There is no second opportunity. Yeah. And usually if there is, it's basically I got in on an hourly close. Uh, it barely wicked me out, um, which again is rare, but sometimes it's happened before. It'll barely wick me out and then it'll go right back in my direction. I just re-enter the same exact trade with that reposition stop loss. And that's, that's when I would get two trades, but usually it's one setup if that, otherwise just nothing. Yeah. How about you? So for me, uh, I do, uh, two trades max a day mm -hmm. uh, but I also do once a certain is one day one trade max a day so by this I mean if I have a winning trade one trade a day walk away after my winning trade and I take the profits and go on to the next day so that's uh, that's where my rule kind of changes and then two trades is usually if I do either uh, uh, I lose my first trade and then based on my strategy I have to take a second trade because I do fake outs and breakouts so the second trade is your fake out. So that's where my uh, second trade ends. And my second trade could be back in that day. It could be back to back losses, or it could be uh, a loss and a win. That's the only other option that r there really is. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do this is because I usually end up with a break even day at the uh, afterwards, or slightly uh, positive day with my second trade if I do win it. Yeah. And then uh, a risk per trade, I typically risk a one to two one one to two percent. Uh, Per trade, and what I mean, the range is uh, not a one percent or two percent. Sometimes it could be a, a one point five percent per trade, depending on uh, depending on uh, how comfortable I feel in the trade and everything like that. So the max risk I'll ever go per like in a, in general in a day would be three percent. Because if the first if the first trade I risk one point five percent, the second trade I risk one point five percent, then the ma mask risk per day, that a day will be three percent, and then that's where I'll uh, end up closing my charts and calling it a day. And so you'd never do uh, you'd uh, never do two and two percent. No, like I may have, like that's not part of my plan, and it, but sometimes if I do, that just means I broke my plan. Oh, gotcha. So I I try to keep it under uh, under uh, uh, like per trade like one point five percent. So like the only way I will do two percent trade is if I've missed my first trade and it ends up being a fake out. So I know I can't take another trade after the fake out. You get what I mean? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so that yeah, so that's where it's like uh like there's variations, but in general I try to stick to one point like one to two percent in between that range. Gotcha. Okay, so then I guess the next one, number three, we've done one and two, got two more. The would just be your strategy, which could be a plan in itself, but we're just gonna cover the kind of the over overview of it is just whatever your strategy, your rules are, your plan for your entry confirmations should be in number three, and they should be as simple as this uh, trading plan. We have four four rules for our number three. I mean, your strategy is like, Gers, what's you, we've gone over yours, but what's your strategy again? Yeah. Like, you can probably tell it in 10 so, seconds. Yeah, pretty much it's a breakout. If there's a range, we figure out a breakout. If it breaks out, you take the entry. And uh, if it continues, it continues. If it doesn't, it will do fake out. You take the fake out up. Simple, yeah. nothing more than that. So, uh, with with uh, what when we say is... Uh, for, uh, what number three or number four? What was it? What number three? The strategy. No, sorry, number three uh, is uh, know your strategy before you go into the market, and mm -hmm. stick with that strategy. I would say stick with one strategy. You don't have like five strategies going into the market with, because you're gonna see those five different opportunities with those five different strategies. So the reason why we're saying is uh, have this in your plan. Know your strategy. You don't have to write it down in your plan. Just be like stick in 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 your trading plan. Just be like stick with breakout trading strategy or stick with trend trading strategy or whatever it is that's what you write and then in your mind you know okay i'm going to use this one strategy that's all i'm going to use for this session and this time and these are the number of trades that you take for the strategy and, and etc mm -hmm. okay. yeah yeah because if you have too many strategies you're trying to if you're taking breakouts higher lows lower highs um and fake outs that that's a lot of probability to factor in and figure out it's just easier to 
kind of have one sort of strategy and work with it long enough till you understand how it works. But yeah. that that could be a whole other. We could rant yeah. on that for hours. That that should definitely be a whole other video. Is yeah. is that? But yeah, I mean, just trend trader, breakout trader, range trader. Figure out whatever you are for your strategy. Even if it's something completely different, doesn't matter. Um, just simple and have it in there so you know. And last one, number four, is yeah. uh, trading news or avoiding it. So you want to take the lead on this yeah. one? So uh, news fundamentals in trading, that kind of relates really to your strategy. Uh, it, can, it all depends on your strategy, is what strategy you're using. And if you're going to be using the fundamental news for your benefit or if you're going to be staying away with it. So I'll say this. I, at one point, was trying to add news into my strategy, but I realized it was uh, excess, amount, excess amount of work that I didn't need to do because I'm more of a technical person. I look at the chart. I like to see my pattern, basically the break or have a range, and everything like that, and then just wait for that. And I think uh, trading news also depends a lot on your session. So it depends on many factors because I trade Asian session. Not many, not many news is coming out in the time I trade because I trade such a weird time. The only news that will come out that will affect my trading time, my trading strategy is like if it's some sort of interest rate for uh, for the yen, and which typically doesn't come out often. So I would say, but depending on your strategy, if you're going to be using it for in a positive way or a negative way, that's how you should uh, base on if you're going to be using it or not. Personally, me. I don't use it, and I would recommend if it doesn't work in a strategy, just stay away from a certain news. That doesn't mean you stay away from all news. There's different impacts. There's low impact, high impact. Which you should know. Impact. But I will say, it's, yeah, and I will say stay away from high impact news, such as like I don't go near NFP days or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really trade interest rates because I know interest rates is affected a lot, or monet um, monetary policies and stuff like that. So I personally, for my strategy and my plan, to keep it simple as possible, I if there's some sort of high impact news, I know which is going to affect the yen or the GBP, uh, I stay away from it. And I just won't trade around that a block. So if it comes out, we'll say 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, I'll give it like 15 minutes prior and 15 minutes after to whatever wants to happen, whatever volatility wants to happen, it will come in and out. Mm. What about you? Yeah, I just avoid the high impact stuff like NFP, interest rates, monetary policy, all that kind of stuff. Um and yeah i mean i have journaled down how all of them um all of the higher impact like medium and high how they impact ea and gj uh so i kind of have a pretty good idea on what type like what type of volume to expect from that type of news release or if there's a spread jump that's going to come in when it's going to kind of ideally come in um, if it makes price range before it's released and then it breaks out after like just little notes like that I have so whenever I see it I'm like okay well the numbers were roughly the same ish we can probably expect a similar thing but yeah I'm always um, 15 to 30 minutes depending on what I have in my notes um, but for the most part it's 30 minutes before and 15 30 minutes after the news is released or if it's like the uh, what was that FOMC then I just last on yeah, Friday. Yeah. Then I take the, I just take the whole day off because that, um, at least for Friday, it just price action was terrible. So I just take the whole day off if it's late news like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing uh, I also want to say is those if you are gonna add news into your trading plan, even people that trade fundamentally, they will agree with this to a fact is. Lower, lower your risk on those days because spread jumps, slippage happens. Mm -hmm. I've been a part of massive slippage, like 87 pips slippage. So slippage happens, that. spread jumps. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's very volatile if it's a heavy impact news at times. Mm -hmm. So if you're trading news and adding to plan, always do low risk no matter what. You can ask any sort of fundamental trader, they'll always say lower risk on high impact. Mm -hmm. Or even just opening a, just open on a small little account, hundred bucks, yeah. thousand bucks, just so if it does slip you and wipe your account, it's only whatever you decided to put in, knowing well, farewell that that could totally yeah, wipe that's it out. A really good idea. Yeah, I think uh, that was Rakil who told me that like two years ago when he was doing <clears throat> before I even started Asian sessions. Yeah. Yep.
because the way the slippage works is if slippage happens, a pretend the ego slips 50 pips, right? It doesn't stop yellow until price pulls back. So it can keep slipping for 100 pips, 120 pips until the price uh, pulls back from a one micro pip. That's when they calculate it. Yeah, I've had it wipe an entire account. It was yeah, so two hundred dollar risk. It took like eight hundred. Yeah. So, so it's it's a while. Careful on that. Yeah. So that was all for. Do you have anything else you wanna add or touch on that we went over? No. No. Just keep. I would just say keep your trading plan simple. Mm -hmm. Keep a, a lot of yes and no's. No, nothing great. And uh, write it down. I would say the best thing is to write it down and have it in front of you before you start trading and read it always before you start trading yeah i did the same thing just simple less is more um and it's got to be it's got to be simple enough to where you can repeat it easily every day and the least subjective it is 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 better so whatever you implement yeah, into it just make sure fun. there's low subjectivity of whatever it is or minimum to none. Um, so that's what I would suggest. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, the subjectivity part is the... That's what I was trying to explain. <laughs> Say, but you explained it uh, way better. Because the more subjectivity... It, it, su sorry. Subjectivity uh, there is, uh, the more... Like, what if it uh, go in your mind? You're like, what if this? What if that? What if that? And you, that's not... that's. Mm -hmm. That completely goes against the uh, goes against the aspect of a plan. So always uh, try to have at least subjectivity as possible. Yeah. And yeah. It so just makes it hard to. That's our, yeah, I think it just makes it hard to repeat consistently with the same sort of circumstances. Because mm -hmm. if there's a bunch of a bunch of what ifs or a ton of uh, subjectiveness that the variables change and then it's not consistent to the last trade you took and it's just it yeah th that's what i've noticed so but i think that's all we got yeah. if you wanna yeah if you, if you have any questions just uh write them down in the uh, comment section you can always uh, answer your questions about trading plans yeah and that pretty much was my trading plan and then pretty much was paul's trading plan so if you guys are asking that what we give example of each in those in those four steps and that's what our trading plan is. It's literally like four or five steps. Yeah. Yeah. And even for me personally, like number three and number four. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess they're in there. I just, there's nothing. I have a little thing written down from months ago of what uh, my plan started to be. And, but now everything is just like, you just know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Yeah. But the, the last thing before yeah. you wrap us out of here that I want to say at least yeah. is if there's any topics that are specifically wanted to be discussed or any people we should specifically get on and talk to them about certain stuff, uh, let us know in the comments so we can make sure that we're not just being redundant and saying the same thing in a different way and that we are covering yeah. topics that are needed to or wanted to be discussed uh, from our perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and that news. I'm Gurja. I'm Paul. And this has been talks, talks with, with Paul. Gurja and Paul. We out. We <laughs> fucked it yeah, up again. We, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll I get it next week. We'll get it next week. Bye guys. Bye. Uh, uh,